I'd like to thank Mark and Lisa for having me. I think it's a beautiful working environment. It's funny how lives weave together. Uh, Mark uh, has the wild berry here in town. And in 1994, he began sponsoring my band to play the Oxford Music Festival. And Mark has been a uh, sponsor for years in several ways. Uh, and I really appreciate that. And it opened me up to this area. And I met one of my dearest friends, a woman named Kathy Berkman, who teaches in Oxford, Ohio. And she's been a teacher to me in many ways. And through Kathy, I met my partner, Emily. And then this um, summer, I got together with Lisa, and I didn't know Lisa very well at all. I knew that he had, uh, she had married and that she was a singer songwriter, and we got together. And she invited me to another house party in Middletown, and I got to see Daryl Scott, and um, who is just a phenomenal songwriter. And several years ago, I'd had a car student bring me a CD. And there was a, a song of a woman named Mary, and I had no idea how to spell her last name. I mean, how to say, pronounce her name. It's spelled G-A-U-I-T-H-E-R from Kentucky. That doesn't sound like Gaucher. <laughs> I had no earthly idea what her name was, but I knew that I loved her music. I mean, it was like a Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell experience. It was, she's just out of this world. And uh, Daryl Scott, I asked him, I said, you know, would you be open to doing some uh, tutoring, some writing, some songwriting lessons, something? He was, he was so good, I was so moved by his work. He said, well, I'm doing a writer's workshop with a woman named uh, Mary Gaucher. And it totally went over my head. But, uh, well, you know, I'd like to get together with you. And a few minutes later, I asked him, I said, how did she spell her last name? <laughs> I said, oh my God, you're doing a writer's workshop with her. So I did that, and Lisa and I went together, and that's when I got to know Lisa uh, a lot better, and we had a really good time. And uh, I came to see the house when it was almost done, and I thought, wow, what a spectacular place. And little did I know that I would be taking a year off at that point. I was still of the mindset that there's no possible way I could do anything like that. There's no possible way that I could. Uh, I really thought that the world would stop spinning if I got out of the white band and stopped playing with Kelly Richie Band. <laughs> and it's still spinning just fine. But it's amazing what we start to think about. That because we do this thing that we do, we can't possibly stop doing it. When Emily first presented it, you know, why don't you take some time off? I was traveling so much, I was just beat up from the road, and uh, really got to the point where I was, I, I loved music. People kept saying, oh, you're so lucky you get to do your, you get to follow your dream, you get to do what you love, and I thought, I don't love it anymore. <laughs> I thought, wow, how did that happen? And I think a lot of times when I talk with people, you get to a point in life where you don't love it anymore. Things that you did, you've lost that love for it. How does that happen to us as human beings? And so I started getting involved in some training, and I've been a guitar teacher for years, and I had a lot of people that continued to take guitar lessons that never took their guitar out of the case. They just liked to talk, and I had a lot of life experience, and I like to listen, and I like to talk too. And so I decided that coaching would be a, something that I was interested in doing. And when I first started getting training for coaching, I thought, I'm going to be this great coach. And I really discovered at that point, I'm going to learn a lot about myself. It's not about being a coach. It's about going through the healing process of my own. And realizing, reconnecting with my dream, and reconnecting with my purpose, and things that I thought I really already knew a lot about. I found that I knew very little about them. I knew what my purpose was as a teenager, and I've been doing it ever since. But somewhere along the line, I had to grow up. And my purpose didn't. My dream didn't. And it began to get disconnected. And so this is a year of exploration for me. And I'm going to play a song that I wrote a number of years ago uh, called, Is Anybody Listening? And this is a song about, that talks about listening to your heart. 
and listening and seeing what does that voice, you know, some people call it God, some people call it Buddha. I love uh, Lisa's song. Um, that, was, uh, that was great. It really didn't matter what we call it. We all talk to ourselves. So there's some kind of inner dialogue going on. And so when we listen to our heart, what is it that we hear? And are we, are we open to hearing what it has to say? What? 